Around a year ago, a flood of this new budget digital night vision system unit seemed to hit the market from dozens of different vendors and quickly became a very popular and nearly controversial night vision device. Today I will be reviewing that system, which is the NVG-10. In typical extruded shoots form, I will break this video into four parts. First, a quick rundown of disclaimers. From there, we'll go to a showcase of features and controls. Then, a quick performance view. And last, organized opinions about the unit as a whole or concept. First, a quick disclaimer. This device was sent out to me by Goodnight Gear for free. Goodnight Gear is not the manufacturer, but a seller of the MBG-10. There was no exchange of money, and I have no affiliate links with them. I will include a link to them in the description, but know I make no money from it, and I'm not required to make a positive or biased review for them. I want to let you know this because I believe clarity is incredibly important in tactical gear reviews. I would like to thank them though because this video would not be possible without them. If you have any questions about this process or want to reach out to me, hit up my email in my channel description or leave a comment. Last thing to know is that this video is not a comparison to other devices. I have made a performance comparison video already and it will be linked in the description. Now to the interesting part, features and controls. To put this in perspective, these can be bought for around $350 to $400, substantially cheaper than any Gen 2 or Gen 3 night vision. The MVG-10 is a digital night vision device that uses a IR-sensitive digital camera that feeds to a display to help you see in the dark. The housing feels very rugged and of appropriate quality for the price. It is IP66 rated, meaning it is dust tight and rated for excessively heavy rain, but is not submersible. It takes an 18650 battery from the side and gets about 3-5 to five hours of battery life in ideal conditions. In my experience, it has been closer to an hour or two with the IR illuminator on. The device comes with an 18650 and charger to recharge the battery. The NVG-10 uses button controls that feel very nice and responsive. The layout of them is pretty intuitive to use. They have little barriers around them to prevent accidental pressing. The left button is used to open the menu or adjust zoom. The right button is used to change between green and white display settings or IR illuminator power levels. The eyepiece has an adjustable diopter. Looking into the device, we can see the display. A quick editor's note, the MVG-10's display flashing does not actually happen in person. It's just an issue between the frame rate of my phone recording and the MVG-10 working. So that's all that's going on. It doesn't do that when you're using it. The display has a pretty standard 1920 by 1080p resolution. If you press the right arrow button, you can change the display to green, like a green phosphor analog device, just for the vibes. I personally ran it on black and white just to get better clarity. On top of the display is a built-in compass. I never used it, but I thought it was a cool integration that is possible with digital night vision. The display is properly sized to the field of view to get a 1x view and doesn't feel too big or small. It has a refresh rate of 30fps which can feel a little laggy. If you look around too fast you'll get a really bad wavy effect from the input and refresh delay. This is probably one of my biggest complaints with the device, but I'll get to that in the opinion section. Moving on to the front of the device, starting with the lens, the MVG-10 has a 17.5 1x lens that provides a 25.5 horizontal field of view and a 14.5 vertical field of view. This is very small compared to analog NVGs which generally have around 40 degrees field of view. You can adjust the focus easily by spinning the lens. The lens has a very pretty blue color that just looks nice in my opinion. Next to the lens is the IR illuminator. The MVG-10 has a built-in IR illuminator that seems to have a mind of its own. It works well and is very much needed in most conditions. The display inside tells you the power level and status of the IR illuminator. There are five modes, IR off, 
IR on, which is kind of a standby, IR1, 2, and 3. For some reason, when the display reads IR off, the IR illuminator is still on but very dim. It provides enough light to see things, but there's still some noise in the image so it almost seems like the IR illuminator is off. I only noticed this when I was looking into a mirror and saw my face glowing. I further proved this by using other IR sensitive devices and sure enough, IR off is not actually IR off. To make this even more confusing, when you switch the IR device to IR on, which is the standby mode, by long pressing the right arrow, the IR illuminator actually turns off despite the display reading IR on. It makes no sense, but I think it's very important to know. This seems pretty consistent across the internet from what I have seen. When the device is in IR on, it is basically standby to turn on or power the IR illuminator. The real IR settings are much brighter than the fake IR off, and as said earlier, are needed in most dark conditions. Another issue I have with the IR illuminator is its placement. In all honesty, I'm not sure where else they would place it, but due to its place being so close to the lens, when you go to passive aim or even active aim, it heavily blooms out the gun and makes it very hard to see or impossible to see anything past your rifle. I would recommend getting a separate IR illuminator for your helmet or rifle if you want to shoot with the NVG-10. The last big problem I had with the IR illuminator happened in the cold. When I breathed out in conditions I could see my breath, the IR light would reflect off my breath and flood me out and I could not see anything. When it is warm, I've had no issues with this, but I think this is important to note in my opinion if you live in a cold environment. Last part to note is the mount and mounting plate. The NVG-10 uses a proprietary mounting system that connects to an ops core style shroud. The mount is included in the box. It simply clicks into the shroud and feels quite sturdy with minimal wobble. There is a release button in the bottom of the mount. The NVD connects to the mount through a clamp system. The cylinder in the top of the NVG-10 clicks into the claw at the end of the mount. When it's in place, it can be rotated and adjusted left or right with a little bit of effort. There is no wobble when the mount is tightened down to the right tightness. It can be adjusted for your head and helmet by loosening and tightening the adjustment knobs on the mount. When the screws are loose, you can set the parts to the right angles for your head. I have all the screws tight, but the one closest to the mount so I can flip up the MVG-10 if I need to. The mount feels and looks quite cheap, but it also works quite well. The only issue I have with it is with the disconnect or release button. If it is activated while the mount is upside down, I found a pin inside of the mount falls out of place and into the mount. This deactivates the release button, but does not fully prevent the mount from engaging with the helmet or being released. If you press up on a small tab of the center of the mount, you can get the mount to release and connect as needed. Now this is not a big deal, and it's only in my sample size of one, but I thought it was worth noting. You can remove the proprietary cylindrical connector on the MVG-10 by taking out the six screws that hold it in place. This leaves a plate that can be used for some aftermarket mounts, like a Wilcox dovetail if you're not happy with your included mount. I've had no major issues with my mount, so I never felt the need to upgrade, but you can 3D print a Wilcox mount adapter, so I might do that for my G24 down the road. Enough rambling about features, let's get into the thing that everybody cares about, that being performance. A bit over two months ago, I made a night vision comparison video with the PVS69, MVG10, and a Gen 2 Plus analog device. I'll link that video in the description as it was a very good performance comparison and showcase. Go watch that if you want a good comparison to other devices. I'm going to follow the same format as I did with this video with a little bit of tweaks to make it a bit simpler, but only with the MVG10. And I'm not going to lie, I will recycle some of the MVG10 footage from that video for this one because I think it applies very well. Last thing to note, as I've previously stated, the IR illuminator used for the MVG-10 is the built-in IR illuminator, and just because it says IR on does not mean the IR illuminator is on. The IR illuminator is only on if it reads IR 1, 2, or 3, and IR on actually means the IR illuminator is off, as I previously stated. Here's a quick guide just on where info will be.
as we saw in the performance section, the MVG-10 can look quite sharp without IR, but quickly gets very dark and hard to use in non-ideal conditions. And when I say non-ideal conditions, I mean anything with them about 60% moon. Kicking the IR on can instantly improve these conditions and give a very sharp image most of the time. If you don't mind IR's light shining, then this is not a big deal. Please remember that IR light is not visible to the human eye, but it is very visible under all other types of night vision. For me, I don't mind, but I do prefer not to have to shine it, and I just find it cooler to use night vision without IR light. People say that Gen 2 Plus Analog night vision works well without IR light around 90% of the time, and that IR illuminator is needed for the other 10%. I agree with that and think the MVG-10 kind of works in the opposite. It needs IR light around 75% of the time, and uh, the other 25% you can run it just fine without any IR light. I would like to note, despite all of this, I still think this is a step in the right direction for digital night vision. A lot of other devices I have seen rely solely on IR light to properly run, but it is nice to see a push in the market to get better low light sensors working. Another very important thing to mention is the refresh rate. The MVG-10 has a 30fps refresh rate that feels very wavy desynced. There is not much input lag, but it definitely is noticeable. I believe this is to create as good of an image as the sensors possibly can. In function, this turns out to be quite the headache while moving. Slow walking isn't really a big deal and it can be a little blurry at times, but it's very hard to run with this device on your head. If you are standing still or moving slowly, the clarity is very nice in proper conditions though. As I previously stated, the MVG-10 has a true 1x view. This is useful for several reasons. It helps you easily determine the size of things near and far and creates a pretty natural viewing experience. Now the issue I found with the MVG-10 and its 1x view is how it feels with a slower wavy frame rate. This is kind of impossible to show, but the 1x does not always line up with what your other eye is seeing, and it kind of lags behind due to the frame rate and input lag. At times, especially in mixed lighting, this can be quite disorienting. I'll go into more detail on this in the opinion section, but despite the frame rate issue, I think the 1x lens is a major step in the right direction compared to a lot of other off-the-shelf night vision items. All right, uh, it's a really nice day outside, and I uh, figured I'd just record the opinions part, I guess, end of the video out here. Kind of just using my script as notes, because it's opinions, I don't think it's that deep. Uh, first of all, I always kind of want to get this part, say, uh, feel free to ask any type of questions in the comments. I read all of them. I try to respond to all of them. I generally can. Um, sometimes they're very confusing, but I do my best. Um, and if you are really interested in something, uh, shoot me up an email, uh, and I'll, I'll respond to that too. Just know I don't sell any of this stuff. That's, I, I don't do that. Um, but if you want to reach out to me to get something on the channel or something like that, hit me up. Uh, so just for or some organized opinions. Uh, as the title states, in my opinion, the MVG-10 is the first step in the right direction for uh, digital night vision for several reasons. Uh, so I think the first main thing that makes me say that is uh, the housing, housing system uh, is very rugged. Like it doesn't feel like it's just cheap plastic. Um, and I wouldn't be afraid of dropping this thing, throwing this thing, uh, or getting hit by some Airsoft BB. I feel very comfortable bringing this to an Airsoft game. Um, I just really like how rugged it feels. Um, that a lot of the cheaper night vision things you'll get off Amazon, if you get those weird like binocular things, I have two tubes, but it goes to one screen um, off Amazon. Uh, I'll put one somewhere on here. Uh, but those feel so cheap. And I'd be, I feel like it would break in a moment's notice. Um, so that's kind of like the first thing that I really like. And it just feels good to know that this is a rugged, pretty rugged option. Um, Next thing is uh, the sensor is not like solely IR dependent. Uh, I stated this earlier, but this thing can perform in pretty well in high moon conditions and you will see better, uh, much better than people to the, than the naked eye. Does it beat analog? No, go watch my comparison video if you're curious about that. But does it uh, perform better and do the sensors provide a better image without IR than the human eye? Uh, definitely, and that's really cool. Uh, I know these are things that are like bare minimum uh, that you'd expect, but uh, 
digital night vision. Uh, the ones I featured on this channel, I feel like generally do a pretty good job, but it, most cheap digital night vision, I like the, they don't have to build yourself or stuff. Um, generally just does terrible without any IR light. So that is pretty cool to uh, consider. Now, once again, I did say that once you get to dark conditions, IR light is pretty much required. Um, and it can get worse than the human eye occasionally in those super, super dark nights. Um, but with a little bit of IR light, you're set. You can see everything very clear. Uh, 1X view, while in practice, it is not perfect. Um, it is a, another awesome step in the right direction. There's a lot of advantages to this. It's kind of hard to explain, but it, it just helps your eyes kind of adjust faster to uh, having a non-1x view. And uh, sometimes people will say, um, just because something's not magnified doesn't mean it's 1x, if that makes sense. The best way to explain it, right, is like, uh, um, get, like put a, I don't know, put your hand in a circle and then cover that circle with your hand and then like close your dawn dot on the eye and then think of that image, what you're seeing right there, as exactly what the night vision device is showing. So when you have both eyes open in right conditions, you technically can get away with depth perception if your left eye can see just as well as your uh, right eye. That doesn't happen in practice because it's dark, your left eye uh, isn't seeing anything, um, but uh, it makes it less disorienting. There's times where people will have a device that isn't magnified, right? So you're not being like, uh, it's not like 2, 3x, it's not like a scope, but it also isn't that true 1x, which is uh, the same, like, we're seeing the same thing as our other eye is seeing, like same magnification, because uh, a good example, I would say, is the PVS69 Gen 3s. Um, now, they changed this to 1x, I haven't gotten my hands on one of those yet, but I'll try to in the, in the future. Uh, those are wide field of view, right? Um, they don't feel uncomfortable, you don't feel like you're being zoomed into something, but they don't give the same image as your other eye. They're not true 1x. So when I say true 1x, it's not exactly 1x, but it's like close enough. Oh, sorry, that was a bit of a tangent. Um, I think the last major thing that I really like is the fact that you can just buy this and get a bump helmet in your set, right? Um, so this is the helmet that you can get off Goodnight Gear. Um, it's pretty comfortable, uh, nothing like too much to note about it, but the nice thing is you get your night vision device, you get your mount, right? And you get your helmet, all come in the same package, all from the US, made in China, but shipped from the US. Clicks in, clicks in, and you're ready to go, right? Um, I'll get that behind my head, but like, you're set. Uh, the filling in the back right here is just a battery pack uh, that I use as a counterweight. But the other thing is if you have, uh, for example, this is my normal helmet uh, bump setup that I use. Um, you can also just throw that on here. You don't have to, if you already have a bump helmet, you're also good there, right? So if I want to, I can just run this as is and you're just ready to go, right? Nothing more to it. You don't have to 3D print adapter brackets. You don't have to use those super uncomfortable um, like bungee, uh, kind of skull crusher like things. I'll put another one on screen, but uh, they're super nice, super easy to uh, set up. And that's honestly another really awesome thing. It's like, um, these are made to work with actual gear. Um, now this is like an airsoft bump, but like this would work with the Ops Core, uh, like Carbon SF or something like that. But they're made to work with actual gear. You're not, you don't need those weird budgie crap. Um, I'm kind of repeating myself, but I think you guys kind of get what I'm saying. Um, they're meant to be comfortable. Uh, yeah. Uh, so kind of on to the negatives. Um, and yeah, let's just get, let's just get into it. Uh, frame rate is pretty bad. Um, it's pretty nauseating if you're trying to run or move or even quickly turn your head. Um, fast paced tax, tasks at 30 frames per second uh, is pretty difficult and especially with just that little bit of uh, input delay. Um, now is it impossible? No, you can definitely train around it. 
uh, but for like airsoft or tactical movement, I would say it would be pretty hard to use. Now, if you get enough training, your reps in, you get very familiar with the device, uh, you get used to it, you're definitely gonna be able to train around it, but it is just something to know. Um, if this thing had a faster frame rate, you definitely would be able to do uh, much better. And I think the frame rate actually holds this device back uh, a lot. I will say though, uh, for like light planking, uh, just like kind of what I did in the intro with my 22, um, the frame rate's no big deal, right? You're not moving, you're not doing a lot of stuff. It's just it's kind of more still image. You're kind of scanning around. You're gonna be fine for that. Uh, walking, just fine too. This thing's really fun to walk at. And the uh, one of my favorite things to do is I just walk out, look at the stars. This thing does excellent with uh, getting stars into your, uh, well, just catching stars. Really, really good job on that. So stars are really pretty under it and walks are easy even with that uh, slower frame rate. Um, and I mean, if you want to hunt with this, uh, I don't personally hunt. I know people that do, and I know people that have with NVG 30s. Uh, I don't think the frame rate is too slow to not handle walking or some more still activity like uh, animal watching or stuff like that. I personally don't do that. I do a lot of walking with night vision and walking with this uh, was not too bad. I thought it was very possible, but uh, once I did some more movement stuff, it did kind of become quite a bit of a headache. Um, next thing is the field of view is tiny, uh, 22.5 uh, degrees is very small. I, earlier in this video, I showed you compared to an analog night vision device, which is 40 degrees field of view. And, uh, you kind of see how small it is like 22.5. You're like, Oh, that's half of 40 degrees field of view. Uh, I'm not very good at math, but like, uh, it, it feels like way less than half. And I know that's because of the vertical field of view and stuff like that, but in like area and science stuff, but like uh, it feels very claustrophobic, right? You feel like, uh, especially in those good nights where you seeing a lot with this, right? Um, you feel like that tiny thing is like all you can see and it's kind of claustrophobic. I personally have that issue. Um, it's, it's not the best, um, but it's just kind of like catches you off guard. Uh, sometimes you're like moving your head a lot to see more, but the frame rate's slower, so it kind of just becomes this uh, bad double-edged sword. Double-edged, yeah. Um, now, because of this, I know that 22.5 degrees field of view is to kind of work in correspondence with the N1X. Uh, I, I like, I like, I don't want to say I like seeing that, but it is nice to see that, right? They're trying to do 1X. The the hold back is that small field of view, right? Um, I, as I previously said, I think that's a step in the right direction, but not necessarily a uh, what I'd want to, to see, right? Step in the right direction, but I want to see them do more with it. Um, but like, as I also said, plinking and walking, do they, that does not need a big FOV, right? Uh, those two things you can deal with that 22 degrees. You're not going to feel claustrophobic. And even then, I, I did loan this out to some friends when I ran my I ran my analog in this helmet. I'd give them the uh, MVG 10 on the bump, and uh, when I did that, they were already blown away. So if you don't have night vision experience, I think you're gonna, still going to be uh, pretty surprised by it. Uh, last thing, sample size of one on this, but uh, I found this to be quite the battery trainer. Um, so this does take, as I previously said, the 18650s. Uh, but with a full charge and IR on, uh, most of the time I get only two hours and sometimes even less depending on the weather uh, of battery life. I want to clarify, I used this from late October. I posted that comparison video in like end of December and now we're entering early spring, right? So that is like for some of the colder periods of the year, especially for the Midwest. Um, so that could be it. I'll probably do a kind of report back in the summer. Uh, but this thing has been quite the battery trainer. You get like an hour to two at most with the IR on, and as I previously said, you're gonna need the IR illuminator a solid amount of time. Um, without IR on, uh, I would say it's more in line with that advertised three to four. Uh, I think it was four to five on the website. Uh, but you're gonna get more of that advertised length, but with IR on, it definitely is shorter. Um, that's pretty much the positives and negatives, just kind of my experience and opinions on it. Uh, I just want to kind of sum this up. 
uh, I think that what this device is kind of doing or representing is kind of this push to more, uh, I want to say less gimmicky, I guess, digital night vision, um, is definitely the step that I want to see from these manufacturers. Um, all the features are like what I want, they're just not all uh, done to the right specs, if that like is right. Like, uh, I want that 1x field of view, but the issue is frame rate and uh, field like field of view. Yeah, 1x magnification. Sorry, 1x magnification, but frame rate and field of view kind of get in the way of that, right? Um, I want a standard battery type, right? No re like 18650 is super nice to have. The only issue is you get shorter battery life. Um, so it's like all the all the things you're like so close to. Uh, well, you got the right categories, but it's just I think you need some more iterations of this, right? Uh, I think it's a great step in the right direction. Um, uh, in the end, I would recommend this to people that want to dip their toes into digital night vision for a small price. Uh, this device is well suited for people that just want to kind of plank targets at night uh, or do nature observation. I would be hesitant to recommend this to people that want to do more tactical movement and shooting because uh, I don't quite think this is the best fit for that. Bucks, 400 bucks in your budget and this is all you can get uh, I think it is definitely better than nothing um, uh, yeah that's kind of that uh, um, so this is kind of going off on a similar topic, but um, it might be premature to say this, but I'm currently working on a review for this. This is the NVG30. This is the older brother, I guess you could say, the NVG10, and I am blown away by this. This device is straight up incredible. Um, basically every single issue, sorry, let me kinda, yeah, basically every, every single issue I had with the NVG30, is uh, addressed by this. Um, this has a f higher frame rate, 40 degrees field of view. Um, this actually does color, color, which is super duper cool. Um, better low light performance. You can easily record on this. So you can record uh, using an app with this, but that, that's not something I'm too interested in. It kind of creates a headache. But this has built-in recording, um, and it weighs around the same as the MVG30, I mean 10. Uh, and this is like, I, I want to say a huge, huge leap in performance. Um, and the thing is, it costs $150 more. This one was also sent out to me by Goodnight Gear. Um, and now I've only been using this for a month compared to like the three ish months I have on this. Uh, so that's why I'm kind of being said it's premature to say this because I, I take my reviews, I don't want to say like so seriously, I'm not like, uh, yeah. <laughs> But like, I, I say I do really like getting to know the device before I start recommending it to people and getting to understand it. Uh, so I have just around a month on this um, and a couple nights using it. And I will say that for $150 more than the MEG uh, 10, so this is 350, this is right around 500, I think 495 on good night gear right now. Uh, the performance jump is well worth it in my opinion. Uh, I will be making a video, hopefully just as in-depth as this one, uh, as this. And if you guys are curious in another co performance comparison, I'll be happy to make that as well. Uh, but this thing is really cool. Uh, I plan on recording all of my like night-related videos actually using this device now. This is kind of going to be uh, the channel's new night vision camera. Um, but I've been really, really impressed by, by this, and it, it's like... Everything I wanted this to be is this and more, right? Um, so, just giving this disclaimer again, I am not paid by NVG, uh, sorry, good night gear. I am not uh, required to make a good review. Uh, but that's my honest opinions on this so far. Um, so, that's about it for the NVG 10. I think this video is probably almost like 30 minutes long at this point. I'm like done editing half of it. At this point, I'm recording the other end of the script, right? Um, so if you're here, thank you so much. Uh, I love 
knowing that people watch to the end of the videos. Uh, I love you guys' comments. Uh, I way prefer comments uh, over views and likes if everything. So if you want to leave a comment, that is my favorite. Um, I got a lot of really cool stuff coming. Some uh, MBG30 is the one I would be more excited, most excited to watch if I were you. Um, it's kind of funny to say, but uh, I have a thermal uh, budget thermal video coming out soon. Um, these are something I, I'm kind of personally interested. I'm not sure how much of you guys are interested in, but these are clone amps of the Opscore amps, right? Uh, for helmet mounted hearing protection. Um, so I got a video on those coming up pretty soon. Um, so yeah, so uh, thank you guys so much for watching this one. It is always uh, good to get these out. Uh, thank you so much for the support on the comparison uh, night vision video. You guys really like that. Uh, and let me know if you want to see another one of those with NVG30 and maybe thermals even, even though I don't know that's like apples and oranges or whatever people say, but I think it'd still be interesting. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this one. Uh, as always, a lot of cool stuff coming. Um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs>